Hey everybody, I'm Doug Keeling and today I'm going to show you how you can give your designs an authentic printed feel. Before we get started, there's a PSD file on my website, DougKeeling.com. You can follow the link in the description to get that. And also there will be some other links there as well to some of the other assets that we'll be using throughout the tutorial. So to start with, I have a 300 DPI document here. It's eight and a half by 11, standard sheet of paper, and I've got a very basic design with just a few colors going on there. And that's basically what you'll want. You don't want anything that's too extravagant as far as the colors go. So the first step is going to be to isolate each one of these colors onto its own layer. You can do that a number of ways, but I'm going to grab the magic wand tool by pressing W, making sure that contiguous is not selected so that it will select the color throughout the design. And then I'm just going to click on the cyan color. Once that's selected, press command shift J on your keyboard and that will move that selection onto its own layer. So now if we turn that off, you'll see that the black is by itself there. Then click back on the design layer, select the yellow and do the same thing. Now that we've got those all isolated, we're gonna put each one of these in its own group named by whatever color it is. So I'm gonna do a little bit of renaming here. You can follow along here with me. Once we have everything named, we're going to fill both the cyan and the yellow layers with black to perform the next operation here. And so to do that, one of the easiest ways I've found to fill a layer with a specific color is to lock the transparent pixels. So select both of those layers, click the lock. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. You can do that by pressing D on your keyboard and that puts the default colors in there, which is black as the foreground and white as the background. So then with only one of these layers selected and the lock still on, just press Option Delete or Alt Backspace and it'll fill that with your foreground color, which is black. Do the same thing for the yellow layer as well. Now let's convert each one of these to a smart object, both the cyan, the yellow, and the black. So select one of them, go up to Layer, go down to Smart Objects and convert to Smart Object, or you can use a handy shortcut if you've programmed that in like I have. Let's move our black layer up to the top here above the cyan. Click on the black layer itself, go up to filter, down to blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll leave that right at five pixels. That should be fine. And let's turn off the cyan and yellow groups just so we can see what that looks like. And then we're gonna roughen this a little bit by going back up to filter, going down to distort, and choosing ripple. And you can zoom in and take a look at this. We don't wanna to go too crazy, so somewhere between 15 and 20% using the large size is all the more we're gonna need for that. And so now our smart object has these filters applied to it. If you collapse that filter effects panel, you can hold down alt or option on your keyboard and you can actually drag this icon down onto the other smart object. So let's go ahead and do that. The next thing we're gonna do is add a blank white layer underneath each one of these. So one underneath black, cyan and yellow inside each group. The reason for that is because we're gonna be using some adjustment layers here coming up and the adjustment layers don't seem to work very well on layers that are transparent. If they, if they don't have a background behind them, they just don't give us the effect we're looking for. So let's go ahead and add one white layer underneath the black smart object. And then you can do the same thing. You can hold down Alt and just drag it and it'll drag a copy into the other two folders. So up above the black layer, we're gonna add a curves adjustment layer. And this is what's gonna give us sort of an inky effect. If we go up to adjustments and to curves, select that, and it'll put it right above the black smart object. And then you'll want to just drag these handles in from the left and right. And you'll see that as you do that, if you drag the black all the way over to the right, things get very bold. If you drag the right all the way over to the left hand side, things get very thin. So you want to go for something that's somewhere in the middle, but you want any text to be readable, uh, both large text and small text here. So I'm looking at 
that lower smaller text and that actually doesn't look too bad if you go too crazy and you pull these sliders real close together you get kind of a nasty hard edge and you want to avoid that so what we're going to do now is just copy this curves adjustment layer into both the cyan and the yellow folders as well so again just hold down alt and drag that down above each smart object once you've done that, let's collapse everything and just take a look real quickly. So let's turn off the black and look at cyan. That looks good. Turn on the yellow and look at that. So let's go ahead and merge each one of these groups in on itself. So select the group, press Command E to merge. And the same thing for cyan and yellow. All right, so the next step is going to be to isolate the black ink only and to get rid of the white areas on each one of these layers. Now, there are several different methods you can use to do this with. And to be honest, depending on how you're going to offset the inks in the next step, it may not matter at all. But the most accurate method that I've found is to copy the black areas out of the channels palette. So again, you could just select all the white with like the magic wand or select and mask and delete it that way. Um, but being that we have a black and white image here already, the channels palette is going to give us a real accurate result. So what you want to do is just go to channels, make sure you've got one of your layers selected, whichever one you want to take the black off of. So we've got the black layer here selected. Let's go to channels and just command click on the RGB channel and you'll see that you get a selection of everything that's white so the selection the little marching ants goes all the way around the edge of the document you want to invert that you can do that by going up to select inverse or just press shift command I we've now got all of the black areas on the layer here that's visible so let's go ahead and turn that off let's create a new layer and we'll call this black and now we're just going to fill this with black from our foreground color. And now we've got the black area. So I'm going to do that same thing here for the cyan color. I'm going to just delete that original black layer. Again, select cyan, make sure it's the only layer that's visible. Go to channels, command click on RGB. Go back, you need to invert that selection. In the layers palette, add a new layer, you can call it cyan and then you can turn off the old cyan layer and delete that at this point you can now start to add your colors back in so let's grab the actual cyan color from our assets folder i have a color palette in there i'm going to just turn that off and now i'm going to again use that option delete alt backspace command to fill in that area with cyan so now i've got two of the layers filled up i've got the black outline and i've got the cyan so let's just do the yellow as well Alright, so we now have our three layers with that kind of rough texture and the inkiness to it where the black has all sort of blended in together. So at this point we can start to add some texture and we can move the inks around a little bit. Make sure that your black ink layer is at the top of the other two. And then for our yellow layer, I'm going to just start nudging that down and over a little bit to offset that from the black. I think that looks pretty good for the yellow. And then I'm going to do the same thing for cyan as well. And you can even free transform this if you want. You can press Command or Control T. Uh, you can rotate it. If you really want your inks to be misaligned and have a really bad registration, you can go crazy with it. And sometimes that is more of the look you're going for, so that's okay. So the next step is to add in some halftone textures to further give the illusion of this design being printed out. And there are a few ways that you can do that. You can add 
some textures over top of things and I'll show you an example of how you can do that or you can also use halftone brushes. Now Adobe actually provides a number of pretty nice brushes right on their website for anyone who has an Adobe subscription to Creative Cloud. And so I'll leave a link to that in the description below that you can go down and download any of those brushes. A lot of them, I believe all of them that I saw were actually free, so that's great. I've also gotten brushes from Retrosupply.com. They're not a sponsor, um, but uh, they have some really nice brushes as well. The Adobe halftone brushes that I'm going to be using are pressure sensitive. And so that means that you really should be using them with a tablet, like a, a Wacom tablet, something like that, um, that's going to allow you to actually utilize the pressure feature. So just as an example of how to do that, click on the black layer, add a layer mask, go ahead and grab your brush tool. And this is obviously assuming you've already installed these. It's very easy to do, not, not difficult to do this at all. But what you'll do is go down to the half tones and screen tones brush pack, go into the half tones folder, and then you just want to choose a half tone that you like. I'm going to go with Kyle 45 Tiny. It says Kyle's half tone. Again, make sure that black is selected as your foreground color, and then just start painting. Okay, and overall I think I like that. I think that looks pretty good. So now you can move on to the cyan layer and do that as well. And this time you might want to choose a little bit of a different brush. Okay, so that's one method of doing this. Another way to do it is to use pre-made textures. So I'm gonna duplicate this. All right, so just to give you an example, I've copied over the ink layers. I'm gonna use a texture over top of each one of these. So in the assets folder, you'll notice that there are several halftone textures, halftone one, two, and three. And again, there are so many ways to do this. This is just one example, but all you have to do to use the textures in this case, if you open one up, you'll see that it fills the whole canvas here. And what you want to do is just select all of the black areas and fill them in on your layer mask. And to do that, all you need to do is command click on the layer thumbnail. That's gonna select all of the filled in areas. These uh, halftone patterns have transparent areas. So you'll just get that selected. You'll go back up to your layer of choice. In this case, let's just go ahead and use this one for yellow. Click on the layer and press the layer mask. And that's gonna use that selection as a layer mask. If you zoom in, you can see that some light halftones have been applied to that yellow area. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for cyan. I'm gonna go down, I'm going to select the halftone two texture. Again, that's selecting all of the filled in areas. Go up to cyan and press the layer mask icon. And again, you can see now that you've got uh, another halftone pattern that's been applied to that. And if you look just at this layer mask by pressing Alt and clicking on it, that shows you what the layer mask itself looks like. And you can see that it's white with just these little filled in halftone areas. I'm gonna press Alt and click on that again just to show the main layer again. And now let's do the same thing for the black layer. And if you turn on the halftone three just to look at it, you can see this one has an awful lot more going on. So um, your black ink layer is gonna be a lot more eroded Now, if for some reason you feel like that's too much, um, you do have a few options there. You can go in and paint on this manually, paint some of these details back in. Um, and that's, that's something I might do here myself. So on the black layer mask, I'm just gonna grab some kind of a brush here and it can be just even one of the default brushes, a hard round brush. And I'm gonna take my size way down and I'm just going to manually start coloring some of these areas in switching my foreground color to white because I don't want to hide the black of the ink, I want to show more of it. Okay, so there you have it. Two different ways of adding in this texture. I'm going to turn on the halftone brushes. 
and let's just scoot these out here so you can see what kind of result you get. Obviously you have more control and I was able to give more of a subtle effect using the halftone brushes, but you can get a fairly nice result too using the textures. So the final touches to this design would be to add in a paper texture over top of everything. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, down in the assets folder, I've got a paper texture. I'm just gonna bring this all the way to the top. Turn that on and switch the blend mode to multiply if it's not there already. And you might just adjust this a little bit. I might add a curves adjustment layer there just slightly to brighten it up a little bit. And you can also see that I clipped it to that texture itself. And then the other thing you might want to do is just sort of take into account whatever the texture that you're using looks like. So in this case, it's kind of crumpled. We've got a lot of lighter areas here. So I'm actually going to duplicate this paper texture. I'm going to pull it up to the top. I have to fix your clipping there. Okay, so you can see what I did here was just take this paper texture and go into the blending options. And right down here under blend if, I've brought this slider up all the way over to the right so that you can see that all the dark areas of this texture are basically just being hidden and you're not seeing those, but the white areas are still applying at this level right here. And so that's how we're getting these lighter areas to kind of show through. And you can just keep adjusting this as you see fit. Take a look at it and see if it's too much. And if it is, you can just turn down the opacity of that a little bit to let the design show through a little more. The last thing that you can do is to weather this ink even further, and that's just a matter of your discretion. So once again, I'm gonna create a layer mask, this time not over top of the individual inks, but this time over top of the whole group. And I'm gonna to switch to a brush and this is where the copier brushes that I mentioned come in handy. And so I'm going to go down to the Adobe copier brushes, choose Kyle's copier, add noise, and then go ahead and switch your foreground color to black again, and then just start painting. You really, with this brush, all you have to do is just sort of click around and you can erode some of the design a little bit. And there you have your final effect. Now the last thing you might be wondering is what about the background color? Is there anything that I can do with that? And the answer is yes. So because we've used layer masks, we've got transparency, full transparency underneath all of our ink layers. And so if you want to apply a different color to the background, just select a different color and fill your background or a layer above the background someplace. Okay, I think that just about wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please click the like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel. Again, you can download a copy of the PSD for this tutorial on my website, dougkeeling.com, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.